Hi everyone, I am Ms. Rachel, your director for Youth and Children's Ministries. Thank you to everyone who came out Wednesday night to help us with our fundraising for the Youth Gathering for 2024. Tijuana Flats was an awesome success. Thank you so much, St. Stephen. This is Second Sunday. Welcome to Second Sunday Weekend and welcome Spirit of Joy. We are so happy to have you here on campus and youth group, we are meeting afterward with all of our Spirit of Joy people. We are grateful to have you here and we are looking forward to it. Coming up on the calendars, we have Fall Fest. Fall Fest is on the 29th. Please let me know if you're willing to host a trunk on the 29th. If you'd like to help with pumpkin painting or in the spooky forest, this is an open campus event and I look forward to our community gathering here for our celebrations. Youth group, ELCA Youth Gathering is the focus for this year. Middle school and elementary, we are doing Luther Springs. If you have any further questions on these, please feel free to get with me. This week, financial aid request for the ELCA Youth Gathering is due this week. Please let me know by Wednesday if your youth is in need of any financial aid for the ELCA Youth Gathering. Thank you so much. And we have a very ambitious member of our youth group who is raising, um, who is gathering things for safe spaces. There is a box in the narthex with this lovely little QR code. You may scan it, it will give you information about what is needed. This is to help foster children in transition and this will help her earn her Girl Scout Silver Award, which is a very important level for them. Thank you so much, my friends. Know that God loves you and so do we. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It is a joy to be together today. As always, the Parish News has all this information and so much more, especially as we go into next week, which you know is a, an incredible uh, celebration and a special time for us. So please take a look at all that. The connection card continues to be included in that. Fill it out if you need anything from me or you have a prayer you want raised up and place it in the offering plate later on in our service when the offerings are received. A call to holy ministry is indeed a special and important thing and an increasingly rare thing in our world today. Cross-denominationally, seminary enrollment over the last 20 years or so has gone down by almost 50%. Uh, so you think about when I went through almost 30 years ago, or over 30 years ago, uh, to where it is today, and there's fewer and fewer people that are going into organized uh, official ministry roles. So when somebody, especially somebody who is a child of the congregation, is called and then ordained and placed in that service, it is a joyful and important and, and an occasion that should be celebrated. So with that in mind, I flew up yesterday to Reston, Virginia. It's uh, five minutes from Dulles Airport. It's part of the Washington, D.C. area and uh, participated in the ordination of our own Kenny Champagne. And so we raise him up indeed, indeed. We rejoice with him. You uh, know Carolyn and Mike and the family, and they're still actively involved here. And it was a, a St. Stephen Fest yesterday, as many of your former pastors and vicars and, and people who have been uh, serving the church were all there. It was a joyful occasion. And uh, please go to the St. Stephen Facebook page if you're interested in seeing pictures. I took, I snuck pictures in throughout the service and I posted them. Uh, yesterday afternoon, so take a look at that. And if you know the Champagnes, or especially if you remember Kenny, uh, he was here in May as part of our 50th anniversary celebration. Please reach out to them and pray for them. It's a cute little church set in this community that was intentionally built uh, around townhouses and a shopping center. Um, and he's, uh, he's got his work cut out for him, but he certainly is blessed and gifted. So it was our honor and my, my privilege to go there and offer our prayers and our support uh, because he is part of our family. And you should be proud of yourselves that your influence and impact on one of your young ones uh, eventually led them to uh, service in the church full time. And we pray that that continues to happen, that God continues to raise up people from our family of faith for that. 
Uh, I'm paying the price today, so if you see me yawning, it's not you, it's me, because I got to bed at 1.30 last night, but that's all, it was well worth it. All right, it is the last chance to sign up for the banquet next week. Uh, there's plenty of room, and uh, don't let that cost hinder, hinder you. Talk to me. Uh, we want to have you as part of that celebration, and remember what that means is there's not this service next Sunday nor is there the 6.30 Saturday night service next Sunday. We are just gathering next Sunday for the 50th anniversary at the 11 a.m. service. When that finishes, we're moving over to the Marriott and Lake Mary uh, for the big banquet uh, celebration, and there's lots of special things planned for that also, and uh, please join us for that. Leisure Time is meeting on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. I think it's a potluck thing. And don't forget, as part of our kicking off and moving into the next 50 years, a week from this Wednesday on October 18th, begins our new Wednesday night schedule. Children's Worship Arts and the Sanctuary Choir continue at their usual times, but we add the 6 o'clock Bible study on the Book of Romans. We begin our new weekly service, the 7 p.m. short evening prayer service every Wednesday, and then following that at 7.30, youth group is gathering with Miss Rachel over in the youth room library. So very excited about that midweek gathering as a fellowship and family of faith. All right, so today is the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, this long green season about our growth and how we live, what, what Jesus has given to us. And once again, we go back to the vineyard as uh, Jesus talks about the fruits of faith. So let us take a moment of silent prayer, and uh, then we're going to rise and join together in our opening song, Canticle of Turning. Please stand as you are able.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us boldly approach the throne of grace, trusting in God's mercy and love. Generous and faithful God, we confess to you that we have not always concerned ourselves with the effects and consequences of our sins. We have often lived our lives as though our disobedience does not matter. We have often taken for granted your forgiveness and love. Have mercy on us, O God, and remember your promise to us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just as the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruits? Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see, have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. be with you. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, help us to do them through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. Greetings as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of St. Stephen Lutheran Church. We are Rick and Susan Walner. We have been members of St. Stephen for 46 years. When we first started, the sanctuary was about four months old. Uh, and when we first arrived in the area, we saw this old wooden sign in front of the sanctuary with a phone number on it. Uh, we checked it out and uh, when we called, Andy Wallach, Pastor Wallach's son, answered the phone and gave us the worship information. Things were different then. Uh, I remember when we were on the lawn crew, and the lawn crew basically had to mow the parking lot. We did that by removing the logs that served as barriers and then uh, mowing the lawn. There was no asphalt back then. Uh, we have had many different uh, positions in the church. One of those that uh, I was involved with was teaching fifth grade Sunday school. And uh, at that time, we met in the bride's room in the old sanctuary. The area, the neighborhood had no tree or no uh, buildings on it between the Kiva River and Douglas Road. So on some of the days when it was very nice, 
our class would take a walk through the woods and meet down by the river. One of the other things that we recall was Pastor Wallach's uh, involvement with the um, world hunger. And in that, we celebrated with uh, a turkey bowl. The turkey bowl was a touch football game between the youth and the older uh, adults, referred to as the carving knives and the gobblers. The gobblers uh, seemed young at the time, even though we were probably a lot older in the eyes of the carving knives. We were, as Rick said, we were involved in many aspects of the church. One of those areas that was special to me was serving as co-chairman of the Mission Commission with Karn Solberg for many years. Karn and Hank Solberg and Reverend Don Nolt and Nancy Nolt were inspirational in helping us to resettle refugee families from around the world. Our first refugee family was settled in 1978, and there were many more that would be settled over the next decade. It was a heartwarming and life-changing experience for all of us. A memory that I have is when the uh, church cross, orb cross, was raised into position for the first time. Our organist, Beth Spencer, happened to be practicing, and as they raised the cross, she played lift high the cross, and the louder she played, the higher they lifted. When the cross was positioned, it was positioned in the apex of the church. It was after many months of discussion that the cross was lowered to where it is today. We were blessed to raise our children, Paul and Amber, here at St. Stephen. They were baptized in the old sanctuary and confirmed here in this sanctuary. It's been a blessing to be part of the St. Stephen family, and we look forward to celebrating many more years ahead as we spread the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oops. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. He hewed out a vine, a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll remain seated as we sing our next song, God Makes Beautiful Things Out of All of Us.
The second reading is from Philippians, the third chapter. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you are able. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce but the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as I invite forward our children, all God's children. Thanks. They all thank you too, because they love the children's message. So. 
So the Old Testament lesson, which, wow, is pretty powerful for today when you think about what's going on in the world, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but it begins with this, let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning the vineyard. October every year brings us to the anniversary of the Lutheran Church. Halloween isn't just Halloween, it's Reformation Day. It's the celebration of, of Martin Luther and everything that led to us having our church and our beliefs and everything that goes along with it. And one of the great things that we celebrate and we rejoice about Lutheranism is that we are a singing church. Luther and his contemporaries who were trying to get things back on track in Christianity over 500 years ago brought back the gift of congregational singing. And so I just wanted for a moment to celebrate the gift of singing because we all do it in one way or the other. One of the first ways we learned in all of our lives was by singing a song, wasn't it? Ready? What was the song? A, B, C, D. Everybody in this room <laughs> learned their ABCs by that song. Do you, did you learn in school yet the states or the capitals through a song? That's a pretty big thing as you get like into middle school and high school. There it is, there it is, there it is. Yeah, so we sing. We sing when we're happy. Sometimes we sing when we're sad. We, we sing as a congregation. We sing a national anthem to remember who we are as a country. So singing is one of God's gifts in creation to help us get through life. Sometimes when we're tired and we're dragging and we're not feeling it, right, you turn on your favorite energy song, right? If you're going to work out or a sporting event, you don't hear like a lullaby to put a baby to sleep, right? It's, it's like getting you going. And that's the power of music. And that's why God calls us together as a family of faith to sing. Because just like we learned our ABCs by singing, when we sing the gifts of God, we continue to reinforce and learn about God and our faith. And it continues to go with us. Some of you may recognize in your own lives, maybe you're out in the garden one day and all of a sudden you're humming a tune that you were singing in church earlier in the day or earlier in the week, right? It becomes part of us. It cultivates us. Sometimes, especially as you get older, you'll learn this. You hear a song and it reminds you of a special time and a special place in your life. That's the power of music. So we rejoice today, this month, and always, and we sing as a church. And even if you have a bad voice, which there's a few people here who do, we still sing loud because God takes dust and bad things and makes them good. Amen? Amen. All right, fold your hands, close your eyes, bow your heads, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. Thank, you thank you for all the gifts of creation. But especially the gifts you've given to me, that gift to sing. Fill my heart with joy and raise my voice to sing your praises. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. One of the things that I was really excited about introducing to you next Sunday at the banquet when we get together to celebrate our 50th anniversary is that I was going to unveil for you our plans as a congregation to take a pilgrimage together in April of 2025 over to Israel, over to see the Holy Land. And now with the events of the last 24 hours, that has completely been turned upside down, as well as what I had planned on preaching for you this morning as well in the last 24 hours. I had the privilege in 2017 to go over to the Holy Land, to walk in the footsteps of Jesus for the first time in my life. And throughout my ministry for over 25 years as I journeyed to the ministry and as I served as a pastor, that was, that was my dream. I had never been anywhere outside the country before that, and I had always said, the first place I go when I get my passport and I go outside the country is going to be to see where Jesus was, 
to see the Holy Land. And when I got there, it was everything I had hoped it would be, but not the way I expected it to be. The things that I thought were going to touch me didn't really have an impact on me at all. But the things that I didn't expect were the things that struck me in a powerful way. Now, when you're navigating Israel and the Holy Land, you are going in and out, especially as you go to the holy sites, you are going in and out of Israel and Palestine. It's not just the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, which we often are led to believe by the sound bites that are constantly said, uh, sent to us. No, there are different territories throughout the entire country. And as you move from Israel to Palestine proper, there's always fencing and sorts of things like that, but there's these big red signs in three languages, in English, in Hebrew, and Arabic, that warn especially Jews, the Israelites, that you are now leaving Israel and going into Palestine and enter at your own caution, in other words. Good luck. Things might not be safe here. And you know you're in the Palestinian areas because every single dwelling house in Palestine has these big black water tanks on the top of their roofs. They're emergency water because they're constantly afraid that Israel might cut off their supply. So every house has its own supply of water. So about midway through this first trip that I took to the Holy Land, we went into the, the ancient city of Jericho. And we had to go around that day, a little bit of protesting that was going on for political reasons. But when we got in there, we went to this beautiful, opulent restaurant. Now, most of the Palestinian areas are more lower class and downtrodden when it comes to uh, how you compare them to a lot of the, the, uh, the Jewish areas and the Israelite areas. But there was right there in the middle of Jericho, which was in a Palestinian area. We passed the red sign. We had to go in at our own risk. We went to this beautiful restaurant. Two floors overlooking the beauty of the landscape of Jericho. Marble tile, marble pillars. I mean, the, no expense was spared. And so we had this incredible feast. And Mediterranean lunches are incredible over there. Very, very healthy and good. And I had the opportunity to talk to the owner. And I said to the owner, I said, I don't understand this. I said, as we're going around and we get into the Palestinian areas, it looks like they're, they're a little more economically depressed. And yet, here's this incredible, opulent, beautiful restaurant with this great food right in the middle of this area. I don't understand how you do it. And he said, well, we count on and we welcome the Jews to come in, and they come in all the time, especially on the weekends, and they eat at our restaurant. See, among the common people, the people on the streets each day, there's not this hatred, there's not this division. We know we need each other in order to survive. So we interact with each other on a daily basis. We count on each other for our commerce and economy. It's the leaders, the people in power, that are continuing this drama. We're all hoping and praying that in another generation, this won't matter to our kids anymore because we're teaching them not to let it matter. And there it was. How often are we faced with issues that we're dealing with in the world around us where we, the common people, the everyday people out on the streets, have a completely different opinion and idea than all the things that we're seeing from the people who are leading. The things that are being blasted at us and bombarded towards us. The propaganda, the soundbite stupidity that's constantly being fed to us. How often do we say to ourselves, if I were in charge, things would be different. We wouldn't be handling it this way. Right? Our readings today aren't the most uplifting readings, are they? It wasn't easy after that gospel lesson to say, praise to you, O Christ. Because at the heart of all three of our main readings today is the word consequences. 
Consequences, especially for leadership or for responsibility when responsibility is not carried out the way it should be carried out. Boy, I read that Isaiah reading from the Old Testament a lot different today than I did on Wednesday when I was preparing for, for my sermon. How powerful were the words of Isaiah as he's talking about way back, way back before Jesus, he's talking about the tensions in the Holy Land, Israel and Judah, and how the leaders at that time had squandered the privilege of the vineyard that God had given to them and how it was taken away. It's a consequence in judgment, prophecy from Isaiah. And Paul, in our epistle reading, is reflecting back on that time when he squandered the privileges that God had given to him. He was reflecting upon that time when he was a Pharisee, a religious leader, when he was filled with so much zeal and so much confidence in himself, his flesh, his idea, his agendas, his understanding of things in the world, that he was persecuting the Christian church, those early followers of Jesus, until he encountered Jesus himself on the road to Damascus. And now he's got a completely different tune as he's talking about the hopes that he presses on towards the goal that Jesus would be merciful to him and welcome him into eternal life. And that sets up Jesus' lesson again from the vineyard, where this is one of those parables Jesus tells where you don't need a lot of explanation. You can clearly see the landowner sending his son, his son getting rejected and killed. Jesus is talking about himself. And Matthew minces no words just in case you're not understanding why Jesus is telling the parable. Uh, Matthew goes on in the gospel lesson to tell us he was talking directly to the leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, those God had raised up, given the vineyard to, expecting them to produce the fruits of faith, to lead the people in the right direction. He was talking about how it's going to be taken away, how there's consequences for not living a life in Christ living a life with God. Consequences in the church are not a popular topic anymore. We don't like to talk, we don't talk much about hell and judgment and damnation. Remember when you were much younger, maybe some of you, you got those old fire and brimstone sermons where the pastor was pounding the, the pulpit and talking about if you don't live this way, there'll be that eternal judgment, right? No, we like to talk and live in the grace of God. And we should. That's what life in Christ is about. That's what baptism is about. That's what being connected to the cross and the empty tomb of Easter morning is all about. But does that give us a license to do whatever we want and live however we want to live without thinking about the consequences, the results, the effects of that? We all know the answer is no. That just because we have the gospel, we have the good news, it doesn't mean that God's laws, his commandments, his expectations don't matter anymore. No. It should lead us to what Paul was talking about in the epistle lesson when he talked about pressing on towards the goal. He's trying harder and harder to be the person God raised him up and called him to be. He's trying to be faithful to the trust of the vineyard God has placed in him so that his life produces fruit. And it's a reminder to us again that life in Christ isn't just living as blindless sheep who follow along with every whim, only thinking about ourselves, trusting in our own flesh, or following others' agendas. God has called us as he's bestowed upon us this incredible gift of faith, as he's molded us in his image, as he's given us the gift of his grace and love, he's called us to live it and use it and to especially take those gifts to do everything that we can to discern what's going on in the world. To not be complacent with our Christianity. 
to not just go with the flow, to not just accept things the way they are, and to especially not allow the things of the world, the agendas, the hatred, the division, the labels, to cause us to not look deeper, to not go and try to understand what's happening in the real world with the common people on the streets. It's a call for us to live only in the voice of Jesus, to live in the call of Jesus. And my friends, that's getting harder and harder and harder. But that's no excuse. Because in Christ is the only hope. And if we cling to Christ, then we might be the only ones who bring hope in the world. And that's what we always look for when we come here, right? Hope. So even today, in the midst of these pretty harsh lessons, Jesus still ends on hope. Even though there's consequences, even though there's that reference or inference to judgment, taking away the vineyard, giving it to others, in the end, Jesus says this, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. The grace and power of God's love is that even in the bad, even in the death, even in the chaos, even in the destruction, the stone, the one rejected and put to death, becomes the foundation. And that's the source of our hope. We may not be able to make a big difference or affect all these things that are constantly happening in the world around us, but God can. And God does. So out of everything that influences your life, everything you hear, everything you read every day, there is nothing greater and no hope stronger than what you have here in Jesus. So live your life that way. And don't be complacently, blindly following along. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
us raise our voices together, confessing our faith with the Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout the world that together we press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard, blessed fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with the abundant harvest of good fruit. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured yourself out like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need, especially all those we name silently and out loud. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all steadfastness, you set Christ as the cornerstone and foundation of our church. Build up this congregation as living stones that it stands in the community as a witness to your enduring faithfulness and love. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness and we wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. God of grace, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. God of justice, we pray for the people of Israel, the Ukraine, and everywhere in the world who suffer because of the evil of men here and afar. Help us to set aside our trust in the things of the flesh and the things of this world, and help us to see you as our only source of true hope. God of grace. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back those gifts that God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is good, right, and our duty and our delight to offer praise and thanksgiving at all times and in all places, O Holy Lord, through Jesus Christ, who redeemed us by his blood, restored us to you as your own sons and daughters, and is now working in us to finish what you have begun, that we might receive the prize of everlasting salvation. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with patriarchs and prophets, with apostles and evangelists, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name ever, and joining in the and ending him evermore praising you and singing. Mighty Lord, we give you thanks for having made all things and for your patient mercy in dealing with us sinners who deserve nothing of your kindness. Grant us grace in Christ that all our sins be forgiven and that we be covered with the righteousness of Christ and may worthily approach the table of our Lord today and in eternity be welcomed into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom without end. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come, Jesus. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his son to be our savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord our God, for having made us your own in Christ. And we pray you to send us your Holy Spirit that we may be fixed upon what lies ahead in the future prepared for us by Christ and striving toward that future, may receive at last the crown of everlasting life from his hand through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you bless you now and forever. peace God is at work in you.